me that I would never be happy. She told me that I was unlovable, broken, and that she was haunted by the sadness exuding from me. And as much as I wanted to laugh off her reading, I wondered whether she was right. There was a time in my life where the only thing keeping me alive was my inability to write the perfect suicide note. Because I had received that gut punch of a phone call telling me that someone I cared for was gone too many times. And I had held too many friends as they wept for their now absent loved ones. And I had removed torn up cocaine blades or bottles of pills from others' desperate hands too often to believe that I would not leave behind tears and guilt and regrets. But I still thought in some wild overestimation of my own literary talents that if I could pen the perfect goodbye, I could make everyone understand that my death was a regrettable but necessary evil. After all, the difference between me and the people I was weeping for was that they were good people, whereas I was a bad one who had only fooled everyone into thinking otherwise. And I wondered whether I was, at my core, incapable of loving and being loved. Because I had been broken, both in body and in spirit, and I'd spent so many years torn between a desire to push people away and the urge to get up and run away myself. And in an event, more than two decades earlier, that I could barely even remember, had left me incapable of feeling anything but fear and mistrust and the need to recoil in place of anything close to resembling love. And as I felt the darkness, the damage, half-life prediction closing in around me, I remembered something. I don't believe in psychics. There was a time in my life where the only thing keeping me alive was my inability to write the perfect suicide note. But as I mentally penned draft after failed draft, I learned that if you give people enough fake genuine smiles, they'll give you real ones back. I learned to raise my gaze from floor to face for short periods of time. And just like that moment at the end of Labyrinth, I realized I wasn't cowering because the world was frightening. The world was frightening because I was cowering. I learned that not everyone will go when you try to push them away, and sometimes people will come and sit in their darkness with you until you're ready to come out. And in return, you'll sit in their darkness with them. And even though someone had chosen to hurt me so bad it broke me in the past, I learned that there are people worthy of trust. And they couldn't put me back together again, because that's just not how it works. But they can help me learn to feel safe as I figured out how to fit the broken pieces back into place myself. And like a mosaic, the cracks added levels in depth rather than taking anything away. The psychic once told me that I would never be happy. And I did laugh, because I knew I already was. Mm -hmm.